welcome as you join us here at St. Eugene's Cathedral in Derry for one of our conversations during Catholic Schools Week 2023. The theme for Catholic Schools Week this year is walking together in, in love and in justice. And for our conversation this evening, I'm so glad to welcome two young people with me here. Neve McLaughlin, who works in youth ministry and working with young people in the diocese here. You'll hear where Neve has come from and what she's involved in. And Kiva Lafferty. Kiva is still at school um, and is involved in a number of areas in terms of her own faith development and is very enthusiastic about, about doing that. So I just wanted to explore with both Neve and Kiva in our conversation today, just a little bit about what the Diocese of Derry is trying to offer to our young people um, and how that we're, we're keen to develop new ways of outreach, sometimes online like now, or sometimes face to face as well. So Neve, you've you did a degree you were telling us at an earlier stage in um, in, in, in youth ministry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and, I started and, off. Oh, sorry. So on a far away, and now you're working with the diocese. Yeah, I was very lucky. I started off uh, my degree in Manuth in theology and history, and then I took an extra year where I did a higher diploma in pastoral theology. And for that year, I needed placement, and I uh, reached out to Lizzie because I knew she was working for the diocese, and I asked her, and I said, "Oh, I begged, please take me on. <laughs> I need a, uh, I need placement." And thank God she did. And that kind of started my journey with the diocese, and it started my journey as well with the scholarship program, which we'll talk about now in a minute. And just from that, I did my year placement and a couple of months later, a job became vacant. And ever since, I'm here. I'm stuck. Wonderful. And <laughs> Kiva, you're still at school. You're in your, your, your second last year, is it? Um, yeah. So I'm in, in your secondary education. Yeah. And you're, you're currently doing the Pope John Paul II Award. Is that right? Yes, it is. We're doing that with TY. But Helen Grant is in my parish and she really helps get all my hours and stuff for me as well. So you and a number of others are doing the Pope John Paul II Award from your parish or through your school as well, are you? Yeah, there's actually a lot this year. I think we've nearly 20 doing it for my parish. 20 young people aged 15, 16, 17, that sort of age. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you were involved as well in, in what, what uh, Neve mentioned there, the scholarship programme. Um, maybe if Neve could just give us some idea as to what the structure of that is and the intention of it is. And then maybe I'll ask Kiva just for your reflections of what you're learning from it, how you're enjoying it. What was the, what was the intention of this scholarship programme? Tell us about it. Yeah, so the scholarship programme kind of came about during lockdown, you know, obviously with COVID and everything happening, everything was shutting down, schools were shutting down, communities were shutting down, the whole world was kind of shutting down. And I suppose Derry Youth at the time realised that we kind of needed to do something for the young people of the diocese. And this came about the idea of the scholarship where young people would come together from all parts of the diocese um, through, of course, Zoom at the time, where they'd come together, they would learn about their faith, learn and grow about their faith. Um, they would... Uh, they would talk about elements of their faith. They would talk about social justice. They work very closely with the charity and we still do work very close with Mary's Meals. We are very thankful to have that partnership with them where we learn about social justice and another element to it was parish as well. So we were trying to provide them with tools and things like leadership skills. We did courses with them so that them as young people could take this stuff on board and then go out into their parishes and uh, become young leaders themselves. And how much time do they dedicate? Is it one day a week or one day a month or two weekends a year? What length of time is involved in the scholarship programme? Yeah, so we try to keep it to around once a month, maybe perhaps twice a month, depending on what kind of content and things are needed to be done. But no, mostly on once a month, maybe between the months of October to about April, May time, because we're very conscious as well about school, like we all have exams and things like that. So around once a month, maybe twice between the months of, give or take, October to the following April, May. And are, are these days online or are they face-to-face -face now? Or is they the are, they, well, they have the option now. I suppose that's the one thing, positive thing that came from COVID where we realised that technology, when it's your friend, it can work and it's great when it works. So we do a hybrid situation now. So far, so good. We've been able to meet in person 
which has been fantastic. But we do, we try and keep it to in person as much. But of course, we do do online as well. Okay. So th- that's quite a time commitment for young people. But obviously, yeah. Yeah. they want to be involved in this. Can I move over to Kiva at this stage, Kiva, just to ask you, um, you've obviously got involved in this. How did you hear about the scholarship programme, can I ask? Well, I was actually at Mass and it was in the bulletin. And Mammy was reading about it and she said that it would be good just as part of TY to take part as I have free time and I want to like build up for my CV while exploring my faith and meeting like-minded people. Good and you've come across a number of other young people of your own generation who are equally interested in, 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 in developing their faith and their social justice skills. What parts of it have you enjoyed and so far and, and I know you're still in the middle of it and you can't comment on the whole thing but, but what have you enjoyed so far? Well for our first meeting we learned about Advent so I really liked to like hear about all the different Sundays and what happens each Sunday and like why do we have Advent and I liked learning about Mary's meals and knowing that there's people that we're able to help other people in poor countries as well. Good so you're learning about social justice or you're not involved at this stage in any campaigns to raise money or that sort of thing it's primarily learning about the social justice dimension of Catholic social teaching for example. It is. Very good. And where does Mary's Meals work? Do they work in, in a number of countries abroad or do they work mainly locally? Or... Yeah, so they have campaigns and fundraisers in Ireland and then they take it over to per, like third world countries where they have dinners for children at school where yeah. they can get fed and go to school. So it takes the stress off parents. So the focus is very much on helping Young people like yourself yeah. <laughs> who wouldn't be able to get a good meal and wouldn't be able to get to school um, in their own countries. Yes. Has that broadened your own horizons, Kiva, just of what, what the big bad world is like? Definitely. It's made me realise how lucky I am that I have a roof over my head. I'm able to go to school. I'm able to eat dinner every day or three times a day even. And just it showed me how different everyone's lives are in different parts of the world. And 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 Neve mentioned that there's a parish dimension to it as well. Have you been involved in your parish, or have you any plans to be involved in your parish? Well, last year I was in the synod, so just it was like a. Those were the, 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 the parish meetings about the future of the church. Yes. Yeah. And so I read at mass every week. And just like we still have our stewards from before COVID, but we're the welcoming committee. So it's nice to like, like see everyone coming out to mass again. And like uh, the old people or the parishioners, like just seeing how happy it makes them that there's a young person there to talk to and how everyone in the community is getting involved in the parish. Very good. So and obviously a smiling face is very important. That's to welcome people when they come in and give them a missalette or whatever it happens to be, those sorts of things. Yes, definitely. And it makes them feel much like safer and stuff as well. If we're, if we're opening the doors and not having to touch the handles and just it's more just easier. Good. And there's a, a number of you in parish are involved in that, in that sort of ministry of welcome. Are there? Yeah. And so it's a mixture as well of young people and adults. Very good. Good. And I think that's, that's good for your own confidence as well and that sense that you have a contribution to make to the parish yeah definitely and it's good for getting to know everyone whenever you get to chat to them in the morning and see how they're doing yeah pretty good so Neve, obviously this this um scholarship program is yeah. part of a a bigger suite of things that the diocese of Derry is trying to offer to young people to enable them to grow to, to invite them to grow in faith Mm-hmm. Um, and I suppose it's, for the question that's in my mind, what are you trying to offer young people or, or what is it in young people's lives that you want to help them to cope with by knowing Jesus, by knowing about their faith? Because Jesus was very keen to, to treat people where he found them, not just to entertain them. Yeah, I suppose uh, one of the things that probably motivates me is, which actually kind of came from the set of discussions that we Dairy Youth had throughout the diocese was, young people were lacking a sense of belonging 
and they really lacked a sense of belonging in the context of the church. And I suppose for me, it's to and realize that young people do have a place in our church and have a role to play. And it's just bringing that awareness as well to across our diocese that young people were no, they're not a tick box exercise and they can, as we heard from Kiva, like they can play such a key role in the parish life and in our diocese as well. So it's, I suppose for me, it is given that young people an environment and a sense that they do belong, that there is a place for them. There is a role for them. They are our young leaders and they can, and they are more than capable to be leaders. And it's just to recognize that and for all of us to recognize that. So that'd be the one of the main, the main senses, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, you know, I'm, a, I'm an old man, though I spent a lot of time in, in education with, with, with young mm-hmm. people. But I get the impression looking from the outside that life is difficult enough for many young people. You mentioned loneliness mm-hmm. is one yeah. thing, but there must be lots of other pressures on teenagers and young adults. Yeah, definitely, 100%. Um, especially we've seen from COVID, mental health is probably a big thing um that we see and I suppose the key thing too the scholarship is that you come together and it's a safe place where you come together and meet other young people and journey along with other young people as well because I suppose faith and young people it can be a bit of a precarious situ- you know a uh, thing where maybe young people don't express that you know COVID you know as we've seen with mental health it can hit a lot of things and young people Maybe it's a, it's a generalization that your know, faith is something that young people or we as young people, I know I did it myself, we can hide it. And I suppose it's to, in finding that community where you can just be a young person, where you can be a young person with others and journey alongside together and learn new things, but learn things as well in your faith and to grow in that as well. You know, we all have to start off somewhere. Faith isn't something uh, that is given. You know, it's a, something that's really tough. It's really hard. And, you know, what I love too about scholarship is that we're all together and we all journey. We're all at some point and we all learn off each other. And it's to, re- to recognize that we're all in a safe environment where you can just be yourself and there's no hiding or you know, try not to hide. So, yeah. yeah. It can't be easy to not turn into Kiva now again. It can't be mm-hmm. easy for you, let's say, in the context of, of education, of school and so on where lots of your contemporaries, lots of your classmates have no real interest in church or faith or religion. Do you find it hard at times to to acknowledge that you are involved in in a journey of faith with the diocese, with your own parish? Yeah, definitely. Because as well, some people don't understand that you want to have your faith and that you like to go to Mass. But the scholarship programme has really helped with that, that I can meet people that are the same and we can like, go together and talk about our faith, whereas I wouldn't get that as much in school. And you were saying at an earlier stage, there's quite a good number from your parish involved in the Pope John Paul II award. Yeah, there is. Yeah. And that's, Pope John Paul is good because we can come together and we can be like, we can have fun, but we can be serious and talk about our faith and what we want to see in the parish as well. And the Pope John Paul II award is very much focused on getting young people connected with the life of their parish. Yeah. Right? Uh, and our parish priest, he loves to see young people out and helping, bringing, taking up the gifts, and he always thanks us as well. Good, and I suppose being known by name is important as well. You're not just yes. sort of a young person. Being known, being called by the name that you were given at your baptism must be important too, just to be recognised, to be acknowledged, to be thanked. Yes, it is. And our priest, Father Farn, is really good at getting to know us and talking to us and seeing like what we think of everything as well. And you said you were involved in the synodal conversations last year in terms of trying to, 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 to look ahead, to look to see where, where, where the church is going. What sort of things struck you about the conversations that you had? What were the main points that came through? What were the important issues that came to the surface, if you remember from that? It was really like raising awareness for every group in society. So not just Irish, it was like people of the LGBTQ plus community, people of different races, like people coming into Ireland that have their faith as well. Yes, you, you wanted to be very outreaching, 
it wasn't about building walls, it was about building bridges, as, as Pope Francis said, about, about reaching people where they are. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So most of your Pope John Paul work is done really through the parish rather than through the school, or does the school have a role as well? Yeah, I think the school kind of started it, but the parish definitely took over then. Just even getting involved in different types of masses that we have, like we had the children and young people's mass, the mass for people doing exams, like the start of school mass, different things that you wouldn't have got involved in if you were doing it solely through the school as well. Very good. And when there's a group of you in the school, that means you can be seen to, you're not just on your own, you can be seen to be together. Uh, and, yeah. and prepared and prepared to, to handle the, the difficult questions and not be afraid of them. Exactly. <laughs> we can all have one voice together. And, and you find the scholarship programme is, is helpful in, in, in growing your confidence as well. Yeah, definitely. Because it's shown me that it's not just me out there as well. Like There's lots of people in my diocese that have the same feelings and everyone wants to develop their faith together. Very good. Neve, to come back to you again, you were saying that a lot of this material developed online during mm -hmm. lockdown when you wanted to try and reach people who simply couldn't come out of their houses. But it seems that you're doing a lot of work online as well as face to face. Um, and that there is quite a demand, if I understand yeah. it rightly, for a range of mm -hmm. programmes. What, what sort of things are you doing? You're doing the John Paul II Awards. You're doing the, mm -hmm. the scholarship programme. Mm -hmm. Any other things that are happening this year or happening at the present time that are involving mm -hmm. young people that you wanted to mention? Yeah, um, apart from that, yeah, I suppose we've got uh, Lent coming up and I'm sure we'll have a few uh, Lenten programmes, which we have nearly every year. We have the big, big, big one, World Youth Day, which is coming up now at the end of July and start of August, which is kind of, that's the kind of work has begun on that behind the scenes. So that's probably the big uh, pivotal one for this year. And we're, I know myself and I know Lizzie as well is very excited uh, to be attending uh, that with some of our young people of the diocese. Uh, other things, I said, yeah, it was just see how it goes as well. You know, hopefully now we've got some uh, programs coming up uh, as well. We've got the Pope John Paul scholarships happening as well. And yeah, this was a big one, Roger today. And, and, and I suppose you have a very good way of approaching these things. You're doing this, you're trying to train new you, leaders and you're seeing where the Lord is leading us rather yeah. than having to know this is our 10 year plan down the line. Yeah. <laughs> it actually is, you're trying to respond to what young people are saying they would like yeah. to have provided. Yeah, um, 100%. And you're working at a diocesan level. Mm -hmm. But really what yeah. you're supporting, if I hear right from Kiva, you're supporting what's happening in the parishes because the parishes are the key places yeah. where, where, where the church is alive. Or, 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 or not as alive as it would like it to be. <laughs> so you, you offer support to parishes to, to work with mm -hmm. their own young people, is that right? Yeah, we do, yeah. Uh, we've provided training uh, to one particular parish this year. And yeah, we have uh, resources there, parishes we want to reach out, me and myself, or myself and Lizzie and others. We can go to parishes, we can help them. We can give them some of the programmes that we have to offer as a diocese. And as I say, we're not here to hinder anyone. We are here to support and we're here to provide whatever they need because it's it's tough you know it's you know and some people as Kiva said you feel like you're on your own sometimes but really and truly you're not and we are there and we are there to support um no matter what but we do yeah we can have resources and we can help as much as we can you know <laughs> uh you might not know everything but you know we might know someone who does <laughs> yeah and I suppose at a time that's difficult for young people of faith and a time that's difficult for young people of all sorts in terms of addictions and Mm -hmm. violence and all sorts of other things that make just life very very unsettled you're trying to be bearers of of good news to them um yeah. as you say it can't be easy all the time but as, as Kiva pointed out it's very much about building little local communities of yeah. people who are friends and who support one another as you journey together and, and are not afraid to be asking the, the hard questions about what does church say about this what role does church play in the lives of young people? How do we engage with the questions of 2023 and so on? Mm -hmm. I, I think I've got a very good insight into what you're doing. I just want to thank you, Neve, for your work at diocesan level, for your insights into how you have blossomed and flourished in the context of your faith journey. Kiva, to thank you very much for coming here with us for this conversation to share your enthusiasm as a young schoolgoer 
He obviously wants to be involved with your faith journey, wants to walk with other people and wants to allow yourself to be led where God leads, is going to lead you down over the years. So Kiva, Neve, thank you so much for being part of this conversation. Um, the Diocese of Derry, through Neve and two others and Lizzie and so on, are very happy to have your questions and queries and comments. Neve, Kiva, thank you very much for all you're doing. God bless you and your witness. That's all for this particular conversation as part of Catholic Schools Week. I hope it's given you some insight into not just the work that we're doing in the Diocese of Derry, but also the enthusiasm with which that work is being undertaken. God bless you. Be in touch with us if you want to. Slán agus bánach.